So Ty Lue pulled the plug for the Clippers at halftime with his team trailing by 34, benching Kawhi Leonard and Paul George for the rest of the game after that. A game before Denver embarrassed LA by 31, while the Nuggets took an L on the second night of a back-to-back -back in Minneapolis, prior to that, Denver took down their fellow number one seeded Boston Celtics by double digits and another East contender playing great basketball right now in the Miami Heat. Most recently against the Clippers, who quite literally folded with 24 minutes left, Denver had nine players in Jokic, Murray, Caldwell Pope, Gordon, Porter Jr., Brown Jr., Chanchar, Highland, and Naji post a plus-minus of at the very least plus nine. Even with Jeff Green injured, this Nuggets team is damn deep. While Kawhi's load managing, another man coming off an ACL tear in Kitchener, Ontario's Jamal Murray is bouncing back to play the best ball of his career, aside from his performance in the bubble, fueling a bona fide top championship contender in the Denver Nuggets, who Charles Barkley just called the deepest team in basketball. Chuck also said the Nuggets quote unquote, have everything, big words from TNT's all time legend. Entering another second night of a back-to-back -back against the tough Donovan Mitchell-led Cavs, can the Nuggets actually win the franchise's first title in 2023? And what's been the recipe they've been cooking up that's currently making, quite frankly, outmatched opponents quit? Right before that, please subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already, and leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks so much for your support. So after Kawhi and PG combined to be 3 for 16 from the field in the first half, Ty Lue said that's enough, and the Nuggets would at one point extend their lead to as many as 43. Everyone talks about his passing, but no one respects Nikola Jokic for his beastly scoring in the pick and roll from the post, or generally in isos. Then again, after lobs like this one to cap off an 11-0 run, where Jokic would whips a fundamentally precise lob pass to MPJ, I can understand why we all obsess about his passing. Watch the dribble handoff chemistry he's got with Jamal Murray. Here, Jokic crosses the timeline, sets a slight screen on Murray's man, before the Blue Arrow knows the exact angle to attack to get downhill. These two have been playing with each other for so long, and that definitely pays off. Next, Nicola's isolated on the weak side as a split action turns into another DHO before Nicola big bodies Reggie Jackson. Note the beastly roll from the Joker, keeping Zubats low and drop, and Jamal reads the defense, getting enough space for the step back. That's the chemistry with Jamal. This right here is the chemistry with Aaron Gordon as he backs down Morris and whips an out of nowhere no look over the shoulder bullet through traffic. Great catch and strong finish from AG. Jokic not merely has the highest basketball IQ in the game today, but potentially of all time, with the amount of wizard-like sequences he's pulled off since being stolen on a Taco Bell commercial, being drafted as the 41st overall selection in 2014. In terms of the under-talked-about finishing repertoire I just alluded to, as the pick-and-roll man, Jokic is averaging the seventh most amount of points per game in the association. He's number 10 in total points in the clutch, despite playing the fourth-fewest clutch minutes of anyone in the top 10. Most notably, as I've mentioned in prior Nuggets videos, Jokic is number one among all players in points per game from the post by a wide margin. Receiving the weak side drop-off entry from Christian Brown, then faking the screen plus handoff, here he utilizes a pass fake and jab step, but Al Horford's going to play picture-perfect defense as Jokic backs down, holding Nikola in front with his footing and low center of gravity. Despite Big Al holding his ground, a very subtle shimmy shake to fake the left-handed jump hook before leveraging off his right pivot for an opposite-sided jump hook. That shimmy move so effective because Jokic is known by opposing scouting reports to have a graceful, dominant, left-handed sweep through. In other words, they're prepared for him to attack towards that side. In terms of how he mixes up those hooks and the occasional drop step with his face-up game, take these two possessions against league best defender Draymond Green, for example. After a double inverted jab step, notice how Jokic's movement signaling post back down, key in on Jokic's footwork to plant his left pivot, and also key in on the elusiveness of this smooth, endlessly worked on spin move for the Dirk Nowitzki-esque baseline fade. On another possession in a totally different game, Draymond tries to cut off one of those patented drifting back space creating fades from Nikola. With green top locking, Jokic goes with consecutive, this time regular as opposed to inverted triple threat moves, but he again targets the painted area with a head fake. You can see he's directly under green's armpit zoned in on the key right here. He's just going to dribble once with that same body language using a moving jab step at the same time with green playing solid defense to be fair. And watch how his fundamental high arcing L-shaped shooting trigger fends off Green's contest as Nikola draws the and one. 
Overall, I know Jokic is an all-time, potentially the all-time greatest passer, all due respect to the irreplaceable Magic Johnson, but let's start making it a mainstream, heavy talking point in our basketball dialogue that Jokic is also one of this generation's beastliest paint scorers, whose body control and footwork in the post are all-time great qualities down there. Best part about Jokic, generally speaking, is this man's even keel mentality. Despite playing with an evident passion for the game, he never gets too high or too low, and his personality thrives arrives off staying stone-faced and locked in 24-7, despite being the Joker. As I mentioned in the intro, Charles Barkley called Denver the deepest team in the league on Thursday night. And speaking in terms of the end of the bench guys very deep in the depth chart, that's where Chuck's point holds a lot of validity. Denver's got a third string center in DeAndre Jordan, who my Toronto Raptors could actually use, and they have him as essentially just a glue guy, who to be fair, really helps the locker room vibes. Many forget DJ's a former all-star and dunking legend, for the very Clippers the Nuggets just obliterated. Also in terms of the very end of the bench, don't forget about the rising stud out of Kansas, Christian Brown, who just you watch, is going to have a rookie Norman Powell for the 2016 Raptors type impact for this Nuggets squad. Brown threw down a vicious poster, albeit in garbage time, but overall from his stage presence to his versatility and generally his ability to fit in with this veteran hefty group, both on and off the court, I see a ton of upside with Brown. He could definitely have a long playing career. On another positive note, Coach Malone calling a timeout even when the Nuggets were up 27 in the fourth quarter, preaching to his guys that they're trying to build championship habits, and the Nuggets proceeding to immediately respond to that message by extending the lead to their largest of the night, speaks to how Mike has the ear of the locker room, to say the very least. The personnel 1 through 15 clearly respect Malone. That's rare among NBA teams to have every guy respect their coach. Malone's constantly reminding his guys to do the little things, and preaching about championship habits when you're first in the West with half the 82 game marathon left is a tremendous sign for the Mile High City as the Nugs face the second half grind. Right behind Sacktown's Malik Monk, Busy Bones Highland ranks as the 8th highest scorer off the bench in all of basketball. Ja Morant-esque hang time and extensions for nasty lay-ins as such. Gotta love the hilarious stare down with the camera as he sticks the landing. But plays like that display why the kid's such an electrically shifty shot-creating phenom whose bucket getting is only getting better as he matures. Don't forget, Highland's still just 22 years old in his second pro campaign. I've been super impressed with the production of Michael Porter Jr. all season long, at least when he's been healthy. MPJ's hustle and activity defensively has been on point. Given his lack of games, he doesn't qualify, but his efficiency on the defensive end would be good enough to rank him as the 17th best small forward across the entire association. What's your prediction for the Nuggets and Cavaliers on Friday night? Two shoutouts from my last upload and this one next time around. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.